Well, welcome everybody. Good uh, afternoon, good evening, or maybe even good morning, depending on what you're diving in. Uh, I'm Chris Armstrong with Sparks Services North America, and I'm proud to have uh, my co-presenter, uh, Natalie Pelser, the uh, Director of Enterprise Architecture at at and Mexico. Uh, Hello, so everyone. Thanks, Natalie. So I'm just going to do a quick um, introduction to Spark Services North America. And basically, you know, what we do is help people adopt um, architecture and engineering and modeling best practices. Um, we do that in a couple of ways, one by contributing to industry standards. So we are members of the object manager group in standards such as UML, SysML, UPDM, UAF, and many other uh, three and four letter acronyms. We're also contributors to uh, architecture standards at the open group, as well as at an industry vertical for the telecommunications business called the TM Forum. And then Natalie, you want to uh, tell us a little bit about at and Mexico? Yeah, at and Mexico started uh, eight years ago. It was a merge of useful, uniform, Nextel. And uh, as uh, per the first queue of 2023, we were around 21 million subscribers, which represents the third largest provider in Mexico. And we had uh, 833 million revenue, which was overall increase of 28% versus last year. Uh, we have 18,000 employees. Uh, we work with in factory trains of SAFE. Um, 20 of them. We are around 80 architects, and we are working on 140 projects. So, what when we started early 2022 in AT&T Mexico, we our, our team was coming from AT&T Latam. Um, we uh, started to work on the enterprise architecture uh, practice. We wanted to have the tools, um, to have the interaction, the collaboration, and make sure that EA becomes everybody's um, way of life or way of working. Um, so we, we evangelize, we train, we integrate um, multiple relevant industry standards together. We brought TOGA, Archimed, TM Forum, uh, Telecommunication Forum, for, for the one who doesn't know about TM Forum. So we wanted to bring all of these standards together to make them alive. Because as you know, often they think enterprise architecture is uh, just theory. We wanted really to make it a um, way of life, a way of working. Um, so we started, the difficulty we had is because the the architects didn't report to us. They were organized by different towers or business domains. And we were uh, having around 80 architects from enterprise architects, application solution architects. So the, the, the work we saw, the approach we, we decided to take was to train, to mentor, to evangelize, to bring them to use our tools. So we are doing in parallel two things. We are bringing the tools, integrating the tools from inventory to uh, CMDB um, to report, strategical reporting, of course, with uh, ESPARCS uh, uh, ProCloud and ESPARCS uh, ProLaborate. And the idea was to try them, show them what you can do, how much can make your life easier. And at the end was for us to be able to start to put some kind of governance and see architecture as a whole, instead of as parts that were working in parallel. So in, in this, in, you want to go to the next one or? Okay, I, and I was just gonna add one thing, okay. uh, Natalie, as you, you, know, you know, one of the challenges in many organizations is getting people to use the tools. Yes. And um, you know, one of the advantages we have, although sometimes it didn't seem like that, Natalie, is uh, Natalie's team you know, took ownership of what we call the legacy EA tool, which was a custom website application that they put together that was uh, is mandatory for all projects to use uh, uh, specifically to get technology and sec uh, security architecture approvals. 
And uh, I forget when we turn when uh, you turn that off, Natalie. But you know, as soon as we turned it off, using you know the new platform was you know a, a necessity and a requirement. Yes, yeah, six months back in March, or a bit less. Yeah. So here yeah, so, was. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. That is your expertise. No. no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so so, uh, so go ahead. Yep, you do it. Okay, so when we started, because we did implement that already in 1980 last time, when we started, we were uh, looking mainly at ProCloud. Um, and we brought into ProCloud the iteration on, on the methodology of, of TOGAF. And, and we, we also had a, the web front, back then was not ProLaborate, and ProLaborate came to save us with uh, all of the security layer and the collaboration that brought. And we were having another challenge was how to bring what is already uh, existing, the, the best uh, of the telecommunication, instead of reinventing the wheel, how to extend all of these frameworks. So it's where I met Chris, where um, um, he helped me to solve my problem, who was how to bring a modeling archimed using an inventory tool that is also a collaborating tool, but also able to extend the frameworks to down reinvent and uh, all of the open digital architecture framework that the TM forum offer from uh, um, information framework to open API to uh, uh, business process framework was really make the tool be uh, useful, not only be, only be documentation static uh, or, or reference, Ma becomes like our daily tool for all of the architects to start with. And later on, as we will show you, for all of the rest of the solution architects, um, engineers, technology engineers, operations, security, etc. I don't know if you want to add something else. No, 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 no. And you know, uh, again, you know, like we you prefaced at the beginning, Natalie, this is all about trying to you know, not be hypocrites as, you know, architects, namely, you know, a big principle of architecture is reuse. So why, you know, build something from scratch when there's suitable uh, fit for purpose components out there. So again, taking, you know, the standards from the uh, TM forum, the open group, um, and then how we, you know, extended or representing the TM forum, again, using a uh, custom MDG technology uh, based on Archimate. Um, and again, you know, trying to accelerate the architecture practice by you know, building on proven, uh, you know, uh, well-defined uh, components from standards organizations to really, you know, accelerate and jumpstart the architecture practice. So you want to talk a little bit about the IT organization, Natalie? Yeah, so everything we're going to show you now was model on store, on, on expose into um, Sparks on Prolaborate, yes, Sparks on Prolaborate, so nothing was made outside. So the idea was to keep the information in, to everybody to participate, and everybody have the information, the latest version, in a one unique place. So here we, we summarize um, how our IT organization was uh, divided with the different factories, who were included in each factories, train uh, on the safe mate we are implementing on I think becoming kind of expert on the agile safe met methodology so from digital platform where we stand in the at the bottom the architecture on data the digital backend and fulfillment uh, factory is the one that it also manage yep and so uh, each one of the so just FYI for some of the sparks users uh, this is again an Archimate uh, diagram, uh, of course, d done in custom style, as you might guess, because uh, again, there's a lot of audience who, audiences who really don't care about the Archimate semantics and notation. Uh, so, you know, to, to those folks, this just looks like a, a nested box diagram that someone might have created in Visio or something, but, you know, it is a true Archimate diagram, and we actually again, created a custom MDG technology for AT&T Mexico. So tower, factory, and guilds, for, for example, are extensions of Archimate business actors. 
Um, and uh, like Natalie said, you know, each one of the factories is an agile release train in the context of the scaled uh, agile method or SAFE. And one of the things that we did, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a little bit later, is we're, you know, we've integrated uh, the enterprise architecture repository with ServiceNow. Um, and each of these uh, towers and factories are represented in ServiceNow as um, uh, portfolios in the PPM module and programs in the SAFE module. So we've basically uh, synchronized the organization structure between uh, the way we're representing it in the EA repository with Archimate and uh, native constructs in the SAFE and PPM modules. All right, that's enough for that, Natalie. So you can talk a little bit more about the digital backend and fulfillment uh, factory. Well, the, the chance we had is we were not only enterprise architecture, but we also were bringing in or predicament into the reality. So that was a, a big thing within, within our uh, vice presidency, that we were able not only to speak about what we should be doing, but we were doing it at the same time. So our digital backend and fulfillment factory was, was bringing, was leveraging all of our digital channels on implementing all of the architecture integration, data integration, data near real time integration, all of the concept of reusability of uh, um, API gateway with uh, the layer of uh, security when you expose anything from your backend, also adding the identity management. CM module, we are leveraging WSO2, so we were able to implement what we were saying to everybody else they were supposed to do for the digital layer. So that was a, a really, uh, and we brought as, as part of open architecture as much possible open source from uh, WSO2 to IMAP to Blue Marble, even some of them have a small license or more support to enterprise. But we try to to um, become independent of the big names, so the, the software who, who decoupling. We really push for the decoupling as much as we can. Even if we were having a, a backend, we were still very monolithic. This layer allows us to uh, uh, bring to market faster, safer, on, on at a reduced cost the solution that the digital channels needed to bring. So if we go a little bit to the detail, to the next slide, unless you want to add something. Uh, no, just to, to clarify for everybody. So in the digital back end and fulfillment factory that Natalie leads, there are four initiatives that are identified in the ServiceNow uh, safe portfolio that represent the, the, the three or the four uh, pink boxes. And then the next you know, four slides are going to zoom in in each one of those uh, in just a little bit more detail. Okay, so our layer uh, that we brought with WSO2, as I was explaining, brought us the API manager on the CIA um, to have a federated identity, but also um, to have a unique platform um, on the top of WSO2 to manage the APIs and to add any security layer to also uh, bring um, different ways to uh, authorize, authenticate our customer, to uh, be able to bring to the company additional information like the social login can be, or to uh, be able to control who access to what and provide SLS like if you have a service that you want to start to deprecate, you can reduce the SLS thanks to the API manager. So really taking advantage of the, the full platform of WSO2. Today we have uh, already all of it implemented and we are bringing into it um, all of the APIs of the companies. Uh, yep, and one of the things that we're also in the, in the process of doing right now is pulling in the APIs from WSO2 into the EA repository. Correct. Um, to, do a, to try to achieve a couple of objectives, namely 
um, make those APIs available to solution architects when they're doing their modeling um, so they can reference them directly instead of having, you know, every modeler or every team having to create the APIs in their local workspaces over and over and over again. And that way we can get a, a clear view of, you know, who's producing these APIs and who's, and more, more importantly, who's consuming these APIs um, in what use cases and also to provide some greater visibility into API governance through the architecture council about, you know, you know, what is the inventory of APIs and when a new API is proposed, providing again, better visibility through uh, collaborate particularly, um, whether, you know, a, a, a request for a new API functionality, should that be, you know, implemented by an existing API that, you know, we create a new version, because um, as many people know from experience, uh, a lot of times APIs um, in a microservices environment can have a tendency of over proliferating. People create duplicate APIs that really do the same thing, but they're, they're, they're specified or implemented differently. So we're, we're very hopeful that using the EA repository is going to help us uh, as an organization, you know, better govern the API landscape. So here again, how to uh, uh, use uh, uh, best practice for architecture of reusability, avoid, avoid duplicate, uh, thanks to the to the tool, and um, because the the good thing of of having the inventory in the repository is not only visibility for the technical team, but also for the business team for our upper management because they will have a, have a access to the collaborate and say, okay, they're asking me to spend so much money in so many API, but show me the results, show me how I can solve, how can I increase my time to market. So we gave a few examples where like the e-commerce platform has been reusing the CRM um, effort, and then we were able to go in production in three months, which was a, was a record time for, for us. So you and want then you to want to talk to... a little bit about IP, IPD? Oh, uh, no. What well, was, if you want to go ahead? No, no, no. I know, no, sorry, the, the next slide. Yeah, yeah, just next slide, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So in the next slide, so was the other uh, building block of our factory, other initiative, who was lead for one of my peers, was with the data integration on, on uh, um, near real time architect, enterprise architect. So, what we brought to the company was uh, the tool called k 2 view was bringing you the enterprise data near of the services on the API near to the digital platform. So we use the Blue Marble as our um, um, API platform and we use a, a microservices accelerator of uh, IMAP. So this three working together was allowing us um, to build um, with a template very quick or service, uh, use all of the get data from k 2 view and accelerate the life cycle through uh, the IMAP. And then uh, I could talk to EA chapter. Um, yeah. uh, this is, you know, the uh, initiative that, that I personally have been most involved in. Um, so this is just a a graphical representation. Again, this is an Archimate model uh, in custom style. Just FYI, most of the elements on these diagrams are Archimate resources, which are high-level abstractions that are uh, part of the, uh, the strategy layer. But basically, trying to show that um, you know we have our architecture framework TOGAF um, using the architecture development method uh, for the EA work that people are doing. That's governed by the Architecture Council. We're using Archimate as our baseline uh, modeling language. Uh, we have had to use a little bit of UML and a little bit of BPMN for some special modeling tasks, but Archimate's working pretty well for most things. And again, using Collaborate as the collaboration platform to, again, what, which I think, as you said, Natalie, has been pretty essential to allow access to this information to all the non modelers Everyone, Everyone um, who wants to. Yep, including uh, the C-level executives and, and VPs. 
Um, and then we've got a strategic reporting tool, Essential Cloud, that provides some um, other types of architecture views for some of those executive audiences. And again, uh, all of this grounded in the reference models from uh, the TM forum. And then lastly, uh, information governance, Natalie. So as part of our architecture effort, we wanted to bring the tools, we wanted to bring the digital layer acceleration on, on, on best practice, we, but we also need to have data, right? So our first effort was because it's a company who came out from three other companies, uh, we need to have a, a, a good application inventory or better one than existing. And thanks to the service now implementation in the company, we could leverage different modules. So we are having not only the application inventory, but the technology inventory, everything in the same model in service now. Um, we, that will also allow us um, to be compliant, but also to um, better um, understand or to be to or as is to be able to do or to be um, help to this application rationalization on on make sure that we all have a unique um, view of the asset of the company doesn't matter if you come from data privacy if you come from a, a business compliance or business continuity or if you come from security or from operation so that was a was really with the, the value that added this uh, application inventory on this connection between the technology and the application layer. So in addition of that, of course, to be able to be even more uh, compliant and be able to have a good data privacy, we need to have our data governance, so was what to rely on a good data catalog. So we went with Alation, um, was very uh, easy to use, and allow us to uh, quickly um, uh, scan what we have to have metadata, but also to have line lineage, on um, to have sampling for uh, different use. On one of them, well, now will be data quality we are working on, um, and we work closely with this exercise with the operation team for the CMDB integration with the data of the inventory. So was a we started by the application inventory, we went into uh, the technology inventory, we you, we look for the sponsor within the company, in this case was the operation team, but also the, the compliance enterprise team, then things we could not do or we didn't want to do because they are not supposed to be there in the inventory application, went into the data catalog, the data governance, so was kind of little pieces of puzzle, putting them together, we started to use, uh, to have the big picture. And we needed this information to be able to do a proper repository, because as, as uh, Chris explained, the information we have on the repository, we go to grab it into service now. We don't reinvent it or we don't copy it. So it's really a good integration. Uh, and, and we all have the same information at the same time. It's no, a problem of versioning and when when you want to create a project in your TOGAF uh, iteration you have all of the information that you need there available in the repository. Yep and uh, as you know I'll be focusing in specifically on um, some of the details about how we integrated Enterprise Architect with ServiceNow particularly the APM and uh, PPM and uh, SAFE modules. Uh, we are going to be extending that integration to the CMDB um, uh, as that uh, inventory gets more complete. And we also have a item on our roadmap to also integrate with uh, the data catalog because uh, we feel uh, there could be some uh, good synergy between the tools, particularly how we might be able to help uh, characterize some of the data uh, using the TM forum. Uh, SID uh, information model, uh, for example, and possibly correlating, you know, the elements of the data catalog with the APIs that are published by the TM forum and implemented at at and Mexico uh, through uh, the WSO2 API manager. All right. Um, so 
when uh, one of our standard approaches for enterprise architecture is to again, you know, use the TOGAF standards uh, where they make sense to be a foundation for implementing the practice as well as implementing the repository. So this picture here might look uh, familiar to some folks. Uh, this is a view of the logical uh, uh, concepts around the architecture repository according to TOGAF. Um, but, you know, as you wouldn't be surprised, this is not a screenshot out of TOGAF. This is an actual uh, custom style diagram in Enterprise Architect. Uh, in Enterprise Architect. And as you'll see on the next slide, it actually is used for the, the top level organization structure. And basically each of these boxes, um, first of all, the big boxes, the architecture repository, the operations repository, solutions and requirements repository, you'll see those are, you know, really rep represent, you know, significantly different uh, subject matter areas. And then there's a couple of level of boxes below, uh, below that. But, you know, our meta model is, you know, described in the content meta model area of the repository. Any uh, at t Mexico specific reference architectures are in the reference library as, uh, as well as multiple versions of the TM forum reference models as you know the TM forum you know basically releases a new version of their content every six months and so one of the governance activities we need to help manage is you know it's one thing to load a, a certain version of the TM forum content and then start mapping things to it but then what happens when a new one comes out so we've got the ability to to host multiple versions in the same repository but differentiate the mappings between different versions or migrate them from one version to another. Uh, we've got templates for architecture and, and engineering projects also in the reference library, a set of architecture principles, a list of all of our uh, uh, roadmap projects that come from ServiceNow based on the tower and factory structure that we saw. And then uh, uh, ServiceNow, again, is the system of record where we're getting application and technology info and then eventually uh, deployment information from uh, the CMDB. Like I said, each one of these uh, boxes, you know, actually maps directly to a structure in uh, the repository, pretty much, you know, one for one. Um, so this, you know, is also, it's a navigation diagram for architects, you know, not necessarily for non-architects, uh, but people that are in the enterprise and solution uh, security and technology architecture space. Um, you know, since at t Mexico has aligned itself with TOGAF as a standard, you know, provides again a, a common uh, entry point for looking for different kinds of content. Uh, one thing that's worthwhile pointing out, the project portfolio, that's actually, you know, represented in a couple of places. There's actually some of that in the operations repository, actually the list of portfolios and programs and uh, projects and which are you know safe epics and features all that stuff's coming from service now so we have the the list of all of that stuff in the operations repository but then every project has its own uh, folder in the solution delivery projects uh, root node so that we can you know so people can have isolation from all the other projects, make you know, start making changes to the baseline architecture content separate from uh, the baseline architecture content, and then that allows us to promote those uh, changes to the new uh, architecture baseline when a project is finished. So we're using uh, Collaborate, as Natalie said, as the you know the entry point for most stakeholders, um, even uh, uh, enterprise and solution architects. Um, of course, those communities are going to also access this content directly in uh, Enterprise Architect as well. So we've created a landing page uh, that has multiple tabs um, where each one of these uh, rectangles uh, gets us to a uh, specific dashboard. Because one of the challenges that we've noticed is that in a, <clears throat> a mature, complex implementation of Prolaborate, there are a lot of dashboards, like 30, 40, 50, even maybe even 100, you know, or so. And making it easy for people to access those dashboards, we found uh, working with the Collaborate support team, came up with this uh, uh, novel way to do it. So just FYI for some of the Collaborate users uh, on the call, uh, this is actually a static HTML web page with a whole bunch of CSS behind it 
to make it behave, you know, like a set of tabs. And then uh, just, you know, one of the glimpses of some of the content that we've got in the architecture governance uh, dashboards is a listing of the three sets of architecture principles that the uh, architects are supposed to align with. So there are some general purpose um, EA principles on the left that are very similar to those that are found in TOGAF, as uh, some of you might notice, like, you know, data is an asset or compliance with the law. Um, there also are a set of architecture principles specifically related to the digital transformation around uh, the target architecture. Uh, things like, you know, strategically apply custom, you know, solution development, you know, which is basically a way to say, hey, we should only spend money on the risky business of custom software development when it's strategically important. Namely, we should, uh, as Natalie was saying, you know, we should prefer open source or packages as our default position uh, to accelerate the you know, implementation, lower the risk, uh, make it more supportable long term. But uh, if we need to do custom development, let's make sure we do it in uh, those areas that really require it. And then the open digital architecture from the TM forum also has its own set of architecture principles, which are also pretty well aligned with uh, the TOGAF. Again, all of these are defined in the TOGAF um, a convention, which is to have a name of a principle, a statement, and then implications and rationale. Uh, so there are some, you know, other dashboards that list out all that additional uh, metadata in uh, the architecture uh, repository. And of course, you know, the way that these things become real, as opposed to just, you know, nice theory and concepts, is through the operation of the architecture council, who uses these principles to inform the decisions that are made and the escalations that are required under different types of uh, scenarios. Then we've got a meta model. Um, this is just a little slice of it. Uh, so, you know, part of what we want to uh, explain to people, uh, even though we have done a considerable amount of training uh, to the architect community is again, what is a meta model and why do we care about what a meta model is? Again, on the right side, you see kind of our core application of uh, centric uh, meta model. Uh, that was, that's the gray box, the, a business application. Uh, as, and the reason we call it a business application is because that's what it's called in the ServiceNow APM module. And so one of the things that we also did is, um, you know, a, 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 and other speakers have talked about this in some earlier sessions, you want to start with a meta model to identify you know, what are the different kinds of things you want to keep track of, what are they called, uh, what are their properties, and how are they related to one another. So most of the stuff that you see in blue, those represent some of the key concepts out of the open digital framework from the TM forum, such as you know, application, which are types of applications, ABB, architecture building blocks, where business applications are actual pieces of software, those would be SBDs or solution building blocks. And did you have anything you wanted to add to that, uh, Natalie? No, what was good for us that was doing the meta model is we decided which component was going to speak with whom. <laughs> so it was really, uh, we, we spent a little bit time on that, but it was very useful at the end. Yep, and it, it was important, you know, the legend also identifies kind of the system of record. Um, so, you know, enterprise architect is a system of record of many things, but ServiceNow but is- But not of application, yes. And then, you know, WSO2, you know, that's something we'll add to this as we work on that integration and, uh, you know, possibly elation. Uh, but there is a slight, you know, just a slight nuance about business applications, because you'll know, you'll notice in the legend, I don't know if you can read it or not, but it says EA and ServiceNow. And this is based on the premise that current state applications, the ones that are in operation, you know, those should be coming from ServiceNow, but pr uh, proposed new applications, particularly when enterprise architects are doing high level future state architecture, those would be an enterprise architect first. But then, you know, once a target architecture gets approved, then someone would add those into ServiceNow as, you know, pending development or pending acquisition 
new business applications uh, in uh, the official inventory uh, in ServiceNow. Go ahead. And, and the other thing maybe is also our ServiceNow integration uh, implementation is based on the what's called the CSDM, the Common Services Data Model. Uh, from uh, which is a uh, again the kind of the, the standard approach that ServiceNow takes when you know implementing a lot of their core modules, including uh, APM. Uh, we also, uh, as Natalie said, you know we've done a lot of evangelization to try to raise awareness about what all these things are um, and why they're important. Um, and then we took some very deep dives into. A lot of these standards so um, you know we didn't do full-blown TOGAF training but we focused um, you know on those parts of TOGAF that were really the most essential for people to understand in this current phase of deployment uh, we went through training on Archimate um, and then um, how to use uh, Sparks Enterprise Architect to build Archimate models and then you know, provided uh, office hours and are still doing that coaching sessions. So, of course, because as, as everybody knows, it's one thing to learn how to use a new piece of software in a kind of an idealized controlled environment. But then when it gets to, yeah, but how do I really do it in, you know, uh, for my project? You know, sometimes those answers aren't uh, clear or there's multiple choices. And so, you know, we provided support to all of the architects across the organization to, uh, you know, help them put that into context. And we've, you know, recorded all of our sessions. We also partnered uh, with, with uh, AT&T University. University. Yeah. Yep. And so we've used some of these recordings to create, um, um, you know, uh, uh, actual learning paths in the AT&T Mexico learning management system along with you know assessments testing and, and uh, uh, questions so that it can be more than just i attended you know the training or listened to the recording i actually you know got something out of it and can answer you know some basic questions uh, another part of our guidance is um, um, you know how to use enterprise architect for engineering projects to create what uh t mexico calls the project prototype so that is the actual you know uh, models that are being built now in enterprise architect that are used by technology and security architecture for review and approval so was was one of the way to also accelerate the adoption uh, on to uh, evangelize outside of the architecture world into the engineering, the security, um, the CA, um, all of the um, teams who are working around the factory on using, on figuring out where the information is. And for yes. us also to, to be able, so we're working on to be able to, to monitor and to evaluate the progress and to understand uh, what is done, what is not, and to also allow you know, the architects themselves to figure out where, where, what level they are, where they are yep. in their uh, expertise. So one of the things that we've talked about is uh, foundation based on the TM Forum uh, Open Digital Framework or ODF. Um, this used to be called Frameworks with an X for goodness, at least 15 plus years. This is a more recent uh, rebranding, but you know, a lot of some of that legacy content is still around, particularly uh, what's called ETOM, uh, the process, the business process framework, and SID, uh, the information model. There is another one that's been around for a long time called TAM, the telecommunications application uh, management model. Uh, that's being actually uh, uh, slowly deprecated and being replaced by a new thing called the functional framework which is more tailored towards modern microservice uh, uh, open API implementations. And so what we did at uh, Spark Services is we, you know, we took all of this content uh, from the TM forum, which was spread out over multiple modeling tools and sometimes spreadsheets and web pages and pulled it all together so that, again, a, a company like AT&T Mexico, you know, doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff and, you know, uh, 
uh, and I definitely want to give uh, Natalie credit for uh, inspiring us uh, many years ago to you know actually build this solution. So one of the things that our customers uh, can expect is that again when a new version of the uh, content uh, is published by the TM forum, we create a new version of this, provide it to customers, and then uh, have some tools to help people do analysis about how an old version has been used and how to map things automatically uh, to the new versions, compare different versions of the framework so we can have a model-based uh, perspective about what the differences are. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of content in here. I mean, there's I think like 2,500 processes, 400 logical applications, uh, 75 open APIs. Uh, we also, you know, reverse engineered the Swagger files that the TM forum provides to create um, uh, UML-based representations of those using a uh, REST API MDG technology that uh, we created. Um, so it's again, it's really all about you know trying to enable end users to actually do architecture um, and use you know uh, fit for purpose reusable components as opposed to talking about architecture or thinking about architecture because we do plenty of that stuff already as architects. We really want to make sure uh, we can enable uh, customers to be you know successful as rapidly as possible. Yeah, yeah. on part of the effort, we did a lot of. TM Forum training and certification yeah, across yeah. the company. And that was a, a good thing to be able to all speak the same language. So it was really a, a plus for us adding that. Yeah, and you know, it just you know, helps uh, you know, round out the uh, architect uh, you know, professional development plans. Um, by you know, not just focusing on things like TOEF and Archimate, but things that are very, you know, uh, specific to the telecommunications business. Um, and then uh, the other thing that uh, the team, the, the EA teams put together is a target architecture. Again, some of these diagrams are obfuscated for, uh, you know, uh, intellectual property confidentiality purposes. But, you know, uh, again, this is another diagram that is an Archimate diagram with a lot of custom style. Um, that's trying to understand or show some of the different channels uh, where uh, the, the AT&T Mexico is trying to influence and how those are supported by some core digital platforms and then core systems and then enablers, including on the left, uh, some of the digital back end uh, and fulfillment uh, stuff that uh, Natalie was talking about earlier. I don't know if you want to add anything, Natalie. What well, was a good exercise for, for us to go through the target architecture and to bring on board piece by piece, depending also for um, upper management um, strategy. Um, and we did all of that in the tool. So to, to us, the idea is for us to be able to govern, so to, to link whatever is uh, the architect are doing in the engineering project with to see that map or to help them to map it to the target architecture. Because the idea is not only to do police work, it's to give them the tool to do things right, and after to be able to govern, to also help our upper management to make sure we are putting the dollars in the right buckets. So that is, is yes. our goal. And one of the, and this is something I'll, you know, we're getting closer to some of more of the implementation details here, but wanted to start with more some of the outcomes, which is, um, we, you know, we consider Enterprise Architect to be the system of record of the TM Forum refer reference models. And what we did is we basically exported that stuff out of EA and then loaded it into ServiceNow. And then once in ServiceNow, people can do the mappings, uh, particularly uh, right now between ServiceNow business applications and uh, TAM applications and ETOM processes, for example. And then we then import the business applications and their mappings to the TM forum content, which again was sourced from Enterprise Architect. And then one of the things that it allows us is to put together some collaborate dashboards about the application landscape. Um, the diagram on the left is actually one that's a, an EA diagram that's generated by an add-in that we've created to create landscape maps. So this is using the actual 
uh, the graphical representation of the TAM uh, model that's available from the TM forum as a big poster. You know, there's this huge, you know, PDF that's three feet by two feet. Well, since that's, you know, shown at a lot of TM forum shows, a lot of people have that, you know, in their cubicles when people had cubicles. Uh, but it also resonated with some of the executive management teams as a common layout scheme. But then what we did is we populated each of the TAM applications, the white boxes, with the actual uh, business applications from ServiceNow. That way people can easily see at a glance, you know, how many applications are supporting different parts of uh, the TAM uh, model, uh, where uh, overinvestment may have occurred, um, and where there might be some areas that need some additional investment. And then we created some other visualizations, including a, a nested pie chart that allows us to navigate the same data that's on the landscape diagram, but do it again more interactively uh, using the, the nested pie uh, functionality. And then of course, uh, you know, pulling together some uh, charts and, and graphs um, um, about some, some of the other key architectural and uh, uh, finance data uh, coming from ServiceNow. So one of the things that we had to do was, you know, integrate uh, EA and ServiceNow. So, uh, in, and one of the things we also had to do, because this was considered an engineering project at at t Mexico, is we needed to follow the best practices for documenting a uh, project. But, you know, we felt this was a great opportunity for us to provide some uh, guidance to all of the solution delivery teams. Um, because it wasn't, you know, necessarily evident to, evident to people at the beginning, you know, how should I build an Archimate model that conforms to our requirements that have been, you know, dictated by security and technology. So, for example, you know, here this is a requirements diagram, again, suppressing the Archimate notation, uh, but just trying to identify, you know, what are some of the key high-level features and more detailed uh, requirements um, uh, that we're trying to address with the integration. So we actually, again, uh, needed to show this integration using the tool. And so here we've got um, service. These are actually, again, business applications and modules that come from ServiceNow. Um, and so it's a, we changed the color just a little bit from Archimate so that people wouldn't confuse these with out-of-the-box uh, Archimate application components. And then just doing some you know, high-level uh, uh, flow relationships between those components, you know, showing how, what kind of data is, you know, the TM forum reference data is getting to service now, we're getting back APM, PPM, and safe data, you know, that gets into the database, uh, which is accessed by ProCloud Server, which is then shown uh, in ProLaborate. And we've created a more uh, detailed uh, integration, again, to uh, make it exactly clear, you know, on which different, uh, uh, servers. This is all being deployed in at t Mexico's uh, 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 Amazon uh, virtual private cloud. And, you know, what components are running where, what software is being used, what ports and protocols are being used. Um, and again, uh, showing again specific endpoints. Endpoint. So, for example, you were using the ServiceNow table REST API uh, to pull that data into the EA repository using the ETL tool that we've created uh, at Spark Services North America called uh, Model Flow. And then showing at the bottom how we're doing extracts out of uh, Prolaborate, because uh, as some people may know, you can create an EA report of tabular data and then press a button and download that as a, a CSV file or an XLS file. And then, you know, uh, that data was then again used by the ServiceNow data loader to update the content in ServiceNow. We, did, we figured we really didn't need real-time integration from EA to ServiceNow because, again, the TM forum content changes, you know, at, at you know, uh, at most frequently every six months, but we don't necessarily, you know, adopt it. So we might only do this once a year. And then we created an Archimate model uh, that represented kind of our, the standard out of the box implementation of all of the Sparks tools. So uh, ProCloud Server, Prolaborate, again, just FYI, we're still on Prolaborate 3.6, uh, uh, I think. Uh, we do have it on our dashboard, uh, our roadmap to upgrade to Collaborate 5 in the near future. So again, this is just showing all of the components of the Sparks modeling uh, stack, but how they're going to be 
deployed in an Amazon uh, type of environment. So a couple of different workspaces or using another Amazon service called AppStream. Um, and then how that might be integrated with the identity management uh, provider, um, um, uh, uh, you know, RDS instances and an external email system. And then we also used Archimate to actually represent the deployment architecture. Uh, this is, of course, a little bit uh, um, ob obfuscated to, to not show IP addresses and domain names and stuff. But this is, again, an Archimate model, but we use AWS um, icon library that comes with Enterprise Architect to you know, style it. Uh, so to most people, this looks like a diagram that the infrastructure architects created in Visio. In fact, it looks, you know, pretty much exactly the same. Um, and so we found particularly, you know, uh, getting down to the infrastructure, you know, a lot of the teams are uh, familiar with doing this in Visio where they have access to icons like this. Um, and so one of the things that we did, I think it might be coming up on uh, the next slide or shortly thereafter, is uh, putting together an explicit extension of Archimate for AWS and more uh, higher priority for uh, yeah. Oracle Cloud and uh, Azure. And I'll show you just a quick uh, uh, glimpse of that in just a moment. And then wanted to just show you a little bit more about the standard structure that, again, every engineering project is required to specify. Again, there are different, you know, the, the usually it's the solution architect that does, you know, sections one through four. And there's, again, uh, subsections that are uh, required in most cases, or sometimes you can put a not up. So that, um, um, uh, uh, that, you know, there's no relevance to that. Uh, so, for example, not every project has reports, you know, section 4.5. Um, and then, you know, one of the things, again, getting back to our, our training program, you know, after we did some of the basic training on what's COGAP, Archimate, how to build models, and, uh, Archimate models and Enterprise Architect, we then have come back and done more training on, well, how do you use this tool set to create your prototype? Because, again, this is a set of uh, standards that uh, at t Mexico requires every project to complete, because um, without it, uh, technology and security architecture will not uh, give their approval for deployment. And then here's just a quick glimpse of the um, Oracle Cloud uh, OCI MDG technology that we created. So we just, because one of our experiences from um, uh, using the AWS toolbox out of the, um, you know, out of the box, is that we had to manually, you know, go find the icon and associate it with the right Archimate element, and and that was okay, you know, for early uh, early modeling efforts. But uh, since we wanted to stick again with Archimate as being the found uh, foundational language, what we've done here for the infrastructure architects is we created a new MDG technology where all of these um, icons are predefined and associated with new stereotypes that are extending the appropriate Archimate uh, stereotypes. Because one of the things that we wanted to be able to get out of that is, again, having things look like Oracle and look like maybe you did it in Visio, but still have the full semantics of the Archimate la uh, language. So that, for example, when you put these on a diagram, the quick linker uh, that pops up will show, you know, all of the valid Archimate relationships plus any extended specific relationships that we defined in the MPG technology. So that's what we wanted to go through today, just to kind of wrap this up and leave a couple minutes if anybody has any questions, um, uh, is, you know, having the executive support of the CEO and the VP of architecture has been absolutely essential. So I'm sure many people have experienced without the you know, the full-fledged support of those key executive stakeholders, a lot of these adoption uh, efforts really don't go anywhere because people are like, yeah, I really don't have to do it. You know, who, who says I have to use this? Again, mandatory usage by all product uh, project teams has been pretty uh, essential, and it's a part of trying to deliver some, again, executive perspectives of the architecture landscape through uh, collaborate. Some things that we're going to we're planning on working on. So of course you know, we're not done yet, even though uh, ATT Mexico has made some great uh, strides and improvements. 
is to have some tighter alignment with the digital transformation office. So that's where we're going to get into some strategy and initiative mapping. We want to continue maturing architecture governance. And as we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, try to see if we can get direct real-time integration with uh, the API manager. So we have the opportunity to govern the API landscape uh, a little bit more effectively and, and again, upgrade to the latest and greatest version of Collaborate. I don't know, uh, Natalie, if you have any uh, closing comments. Well, that has been an uh, interesting and um, challenging journey, but now we have the results on the foot and we are building uh, on top of it. And uh, it's been exciting. Thank you, Chris. Yep, absolutely. Yep, thanks, guys. So if there's any questions, uh, uh, Santos, uh, uh, we'd be happy to try to answer them, or we can, if we run out of time, we'll do it on Slack after. Thank you. Well, thank you.